We depend upon the natural world uh, and we have assumed that the natural world was inextinguishable for many, many years, that no matter what we did, we could do what we liked, the natural world was always there. It is not always there, um, simply because we have now become such a dominant species in terms of numbers. Uh, and we have now got to realise that we have to live together and not live just entirely on the terms that we choose. At this crucial time in our history, we must now look at the world through a new lens. This is Planet Earth 3. Well, Planet Earth 3 is a, a new look at our wonderful natural world. It is a magic carpet ride, if you like, across the, the four corners of, of Planet Earth, showing amazing stories of animal behaviour. But Planet Earth 3 looks at the natural world through a different prism, and that's the context of the fact that almost everywhere in the natural world is being impacted by humanity. How animals are adapting and, and um, coping with that is a key part of the series. So it's going to be wonderful, but also going to be thought-provoking. Without any question, the thing that made me hold my breath, a leopard 50 feet up in a tree, Suddenly, a, a, a buck, an antelope, appears down on the ground and the leopard jumps on it from 50 to 60 feet up. I mean, that is the most extraordinary shot. And th that leopard sequence is a, another good example of what planet Earth is famous for, which is going the extra mile, pursuing these extraordinary moments. Actually, on that particular shoot, we had two cameras. So we were able to get the first leap of the leopard and then cut to a second shot. And you do, you, you hold your breath, you think, how can it possibly survive? But those are the things that make people the next morning when they're talking about the series. They say, did you see that? Yes. <laughs> of course, I... Um... I don't go out there anymore. I, I'm, I'm sitting writing in the commentary, so I see, see the, the, uh, the action before I know it's going to happen. I, and so I, it surprises me, and I, I sit in, in front of the television set with my pen writing, writing the words, and then suddenly you see this, and you realise you haven't written anything, because, <laughs> you know, uh, you're just completely held, and that may tell you that perhaps your words aren't all that necessary. One of the most uh, remarkable things um, that we've had recently uh, is the use of drones. The drone is now quite small and it can go anywhere. And it can take you and show you sites that human eyes have simply never seen before. The sequence in Planet Earth 3 that I remember showing you was the sequence off the South African coast where the, these poor seals had never experienced, they, you know, they had the odd shark, but suddenly there were 12 sharks and they're having to cope with this new, this new world. And then after, this, after these series of attacks, the fur seals then change the behaviour and mob the great whale shark. Well, I, have, you, have you ever seen that before? I, I just thought it was... Never. And, and, and it's rather heartening, really, that actually the fur seals, who are the sort of the poor guys, and, you know, in the face of this finned death, the sharks at high speed, and you think they're the boss. But the fur seals finally get fed up with this, and in some extraordinary way, they form a team, and, and they chase the shark out uh, uh, of their territory in the, in the sea. And it's, it's very heartening, I mean, it's very, it's very engaging to see, but it's also new knowledge. The amount of incidental detail which the cameras of these expert camera crews that we've had as uh, working with us for the last three years uh, contributes to science is really quite extraordinary. By sheer force of numbers, these fur seals drive the world's most notorious predator back out to sea. Here, animals are adapting to new challenges in a rapidly changing world. <laughs>